فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم لقد قامت الآيات تشهد أنه إله عظيم فضله ليس ينفذ Undoubtedly, all the signs bear witness that he is the most magnificent, magnificent deity whose favor will never cease. The author now says, لَقَدْ قَامَتِ الْآيَاتُ He spoke about the signs of the Samawat and he spoke about the Ard and he spoke about you, yourself. He spoke about three, the author. How many did he speak about? Three, right? After that, the author then says, those signs which were mentioned and all the others that haven't been mentioned, all of them tash how do they testify? All of them do. And Nahu ilahun Azim. That he's a great Lord. Powerful. Majestic. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of those signs have shown that are around us. He is Ilahun Azim. That is deserving alone to be worshipped. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And that the religion is done sincerely for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is from, I mean, what is dim-wittedness? And it is stupidity. And yet, al insan that a person directs himself in his ibadah and he's asking. His wants and his fear. To something that hasn't done any of that for him. Who hasn't created him. Doesn't sustain him. Doesn't provide for him. For him to then turn towards that. And worship it. Ask of it. Fear it. Hope from it. It shows that this person has. Is dim-witted and stupid. You're worshipping a dust, a sand. You're going and you're worshipping somebody who's become sand, dust now. You're going and you're worshipping a dome, a grave, or a tree, a rock in which you make. And you direct your needs towards it. This all is an indication of that this person is dim-witted. Allah wa ta'ala's virtue, fadluhu laysa yanfadu. Allah Taala's virtue upon His slaves, Allah's generosity, Allah's blessings over His creation, la yanfadu. It doesn't come to an end, as Allah said in the Quran, ma indakum yanfad wa ma inda Allahi baq. What is with you will come to an end. If you give today and you give tomorrow and the day after, your money reduces and it goes. Ma indakum yanfad wa ma inda Allahi baq. What is with Allah never comes to an end. It carries on. Allah said in another ayah in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you sit down and you try to count the favors of Allah, favors of Allah upon you, you would never be able to put a figure onto it and say this is how much it is. It's too much. It's too great. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ There is no blessing which you have is except from, is from who? Except it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's far, it's too great, it's too much. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Ya ibadi, law anna awalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum qamu ala sa'idin wahidin fasa'aluni fa'ataytu kulla wahidatin minhum, minhum mas'alata Allah says, my slave, if the first of you and the last of you the first creation that was ever created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam ila akhir Man khalaqahu Allah And the last person in which Allah created They asked All of them stood up Came to an open place Fasa'aluni They asked Allah Allah says Fa'ataytu kulla insan in mas'alata And I gave each and every one of them What they asked for Ma naqasa dhalika min ma'indi That would not reduce what I already have Illa kama yanqusu al-mikhiyatu Ida udkhil al-bahar Just like if a, if a needle Was entered into a rock Sorry, into an ocean, a sea. What it would, what would it take from the sea? Nothing. 
نعم فمن كان من غرس فمن فمن كان من غرس الإله أجابه وليس ل وليس لمن ولا وأدبار مسعد Thus, whoever is amongst, among those planted by Allah, respond and submit to him. But as for those who turn away in aversion, none can bring them happiness. The author says, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ غَرْسِ الْإِلَاهِ أَجَابَهُ The one who is from those who Allah has planted. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah is referring to the hadith Al-Imam Ahmad narrated and Ibn Majah. And other than them, on the authority of Abi Inbah al Khawlani. رضي الله تعالى عنه that he said سمعت I heard رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول I heard the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم say لا يزال الله Allah does not remain except يغرس في هذا الدين غرسا يستعملهم في طاعته that Allah plants in this religion a plant people in which he uses them في طاعته in his obedience the word لا يزال يفيد الاستمرار. The word لا يزال what it benefits us is continuation and continuity. That something is going to carry on. In other words, every time a group of people who Allah planted pass away, another group comes and they take over. And it is like the hadith where the messenger said لا يزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق لا يضرهم من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم على ذلك. There's always going to remain a group of people who in my ummah who are upon the haq, who are victorious on the haq. لا يضرهم it doesn't harm them من خذلهم the one who deceives them. It doesn't harm them. لا يضرهم من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم and it doesn't harm them the one who opposes them. حتى يأتي أمر الله until the hour strikes. They are consistent. They don't really care who's with them or, who's, or who isn't. Al-Allabat ibn al-Qayyim in his great book, Miftah al Sa'ada, he says that the people who, in which Allah plants are people who have these two characteristics. He says, وَغَرْسُ اللَّهِ هُمْ أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ وَالْعَمَلِ It is the people of knowledge and the people of implementation. فَلَوْ خَلَّتِ الْأَرْضُ If this earth is absent from scholars, people of knowledge and people of implementation. خلت من غرس الله It is absent from Allah's planting. And it's powerful that the messenger referred to them as plants because it's through plants that people live. And it is through the ulama that the people live in which they are the ones who give life to these people. Ibn al-Qayyim also, rahimahullah, he says, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ بِرَحْمَتِهِ وَعِنَايَتِهِ بِهَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ يَبْعَثُ لَهَا عِنْدَ دُرُوسِ السُنَّةِ He says, from the mercy of Allah and Allah's kindness and generosity to us, this ummah, it is that Allah brings out whenever the sunnah wears out and the bid'ah becomes apparent. وَظُهُورُ الْبِدْعَةِ Allah brings out مَنْ يُجَدِّدُ, من يجدد لَهَا دِينَهَا he brings a reviver who revives the religion for them. وَلَا يَزَالُ Allah does not remain except يَغْرِسُ فِي دِينِهِ غَرْسًا يَسْتَعْمِلُمْ فِيهِ عِلْمًا وَعَمَلًا And Allah does not remain except planting in this religion a plant, people. يَسْتَعْمِلُهُمْ He uses them in knowledge and implementation. Allah makes them who? أَنصَارًا لِدِينِهِ Victorious ones. Who give victory to his religion. And they are hudat and they are guiders to Allah's slaves. With whose mercy though? With Allah Ta'ala's mercy and his blessing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the author says, وَلَيْسَ لِمَنْ وَلَّا وَأَدْبَرَ مُسْعِدُ The one who turns away and turns his back is not one who's going to find happiness. Man waliya, the one who turns around and turns away from all of this, is not going to find happiness. The one who turns away from what? He turns away min hadihi al-hujaj, these proofs, wa hadihi al-baraheen, and these evidences. 
This individual, Falaysa bin Mus'id, he's not one who's going to be happy. Wallah, he's not going to find it. Aina ma dahaba, wherever he goes. Wa aina ma walla, and wherever he turns towards. Because there is no way to success and happy and prosperity. فَإِنَّ السَّبِيلَ السَّعَادَةَ The path to happiness and the path to success and prosperity it is in what? It is in بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ Obeying Allah وَاتِّبَاعِ هُدَاهِ And following His guidance. That's what Allah said in the ayah فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَاهِ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَاهِ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى Allah says, the one who follows my guidance, فَلَا يَضِلُّ He will not be misguided. وَلَا يَشْقَى And he will not be from the people of hellfire. Ibn Abbas said, فَلَا يَضِلُّ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَشْقَى فِي الْآخِرَةِ He will not be misguided in this world and he will not be from the people of the hellfire the day of judgment. Then look what Allah said after that, وَمَنْ عَرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ But the one who turns away, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَكْ وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ بَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى The one who turns away from all of this. He turns away from the ayat which are mushahada, the signs that are out there, the universal signs. And he also turns away from the legislational signs, the ayat al-matruwa, al-ayat al-shar'iyya. He turns away from them. فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ that individual is going to have a hard life in this world. الصدر. That's why Allah says, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ فَوَيْلٌ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ The one who Allah opens his chest and his heart and his breast. فَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ إِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ He's upon light from his Lord. The one who Allah opens his heart for what? Islam. Coming to Islam is in Shirah al Sadr, the opening of a person's chest. What does he leave? Dik al Sadr, the tightness of the chest. That the person, the whole universe becomes tight, this whole world becomes tight that he doesn't want to live anymore. You're going to have a very hard life. Allah says in another ayah, Man amila saliha mi dakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min, fala nuhyanna hu hayatan tayyiba. Any male believer and any female believer who comes with righteous actions and belief of Allah, Allah says we're going to give them a hayatan tayyiba, a good life. And remember the happiness is connected to how much you are in obedience to Allah. If your obedience of Allah is 100%, your, happy, your, your happiness and your joy is 100%. If it's 90%, then it's 90%. If it's 80%, your obedience, your happiness is 80%. Because Allah Ta'ala, because Allah Ta'ala, He is fair and just. At the day of judgment, Allah says, That the person will be resurrected the day of judgment, blind. Then the author goes on to say, نعم. عليك بتقوى الله في في فعل أمره وتجتنب المنهي عنه وتبعده. Diligently observe taqwa of Allah by carrying out His command and refraining from all forbidden things, remaining distant from them. The author says عليك بتقوى الله. What does he mean by عليك بتقوى الله? He means إلزم تقوى الله. Be consistent, stick to taqwa. وحافظ عليها وكن من أهلها be from its people. Then the author explains to you what it means. It means في فعل أمره by doing his commands. وتجتنب المنهي عنه وتبعده and to stay away from that which he prohibited you from. So if somebody asks you today, what is حقيقة التقوى? What is the true reality of taqwa? What does taqwa really mean? It means a person who comes with fi'lu fi'lu lil awamir doing of the commands that Allah commanded you subhanahu wa ta'ala 
nawahi, and to stay away from that which he prohibited you from subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what Talq ibn Habib, rahimahullah, when he was asked about piety, he said, and I believe his definition is the best. Ibn Battah brings in his kitab al-ibadat al-kubra. It is the best definition. He says taqwa means an ta'mala bi ta'atillahi. It is to come and to implement and to do in obedience of Allah. Ala nurin min Allah from a, 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 with a light from Allah. Raja'a thawabillahi hoping for Allah's reward. What taqwa also means tarku ma'asillah and leaving off the prohibited things. Ala nurin min Allah with a light from Allah. Khawfa iqabillahi and fearing the punishment of Allah. So the Shaykh Rahimullah, he used that definition of Talq ibn Habib and made it into this line. Alayka bi taqwa Allah fi fi'li amrihi wa tajtalibu al-manhiyya anhu wa tub'idu to be far from it and to stay away from that which he prohibited you from subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. وكن مخلصا لله واحذر من من الريا وتابع رسول الله إن كنت تعبد. Be sincere with Allah and beware of الريا and emulate the messenger of Allah when you perform acts of worship. The author then says, وَكُنْ مُخْلِصًا لِلَّهِ وَحْذَرْ مِنَ الْرِيَا وَكُنْ مُخْلِصًا لِلَّهِ Be one whose actions are sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sake. Allah says in the Quran, أَلَا لِلَّهِ الدِّينُ الْخَالِصِ Verily, the religion of Allah is that which is based upon sincerity. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ They were not commanded to worship Allah except with sincerity in the religion. What does ikhlas mean? It means الصَّافِي النَّقِي Pure. الَّذِي لَا شَائِبَةَ بِهِ There is no taint in it. So what it means is that Ikhlasu dini lillahi means what? Ayyakuna safiyan naqiyan la yuradu bihi illa Allah. That it is pure and it's clean. And it is not intended for anybody except him subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yuradu bihi dunya, you don't intend worldly gain from it. Wala riya, and you don't also intend from it showing off. Wala sub'ah. And you're not trying, you're not doing it so you can be heard of. And you're not doing it for any other gain. It is all for Allah's sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do for Allah's sake. That you do it for Him alone. You don't do it. To gain anything or anyone's face except him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walidalika, this is the one thing that shaitan makes sure he can get to the person through. Pray if you want. Fast if you want. Give zakat if you want. Give hajj. If he gets to your intention, all of that will benefit you. Then the author goes on to say, min Stay away from showing off. Showing off is the opposite of ikhlas. It damages a person's ikhlas. We have to be upon ala hadharin shadeedin min al riya. We have to be very strong and powerful when it comes to staying away from showing off. And from the things sometimes, the way that shaitan comes to you is very subtle. It'll make you say, this is normal, no problem. Not min al dhuhur, so you can be out. ولذلك the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in hadith an Imam ibn Majah narrated in his sunan Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani رحمه الله رحمة واسعة he authenticated it يقوم الرجل يصلي a man will stand up, stand up and pray فيزين صلاته he perfects his prayer لما يرى من نظر رجل 
He beautifies his prayer because of the fact that he sees another person is looking at him, so he beautifies his prayer for them. He makes sure that they realize that he's praying correctly. Shaitan loves to get to the students of knowledge. He loves it. He loves to whisper to them. He loves for them to uh, speak in a particular way and articulate things in a particular way. Even if they don't necessarily think that they are showing off. But shaitan will make you do it. One of the things that shaitan does is that he makes the person go when a student of knowledge manages to build a library and he has a library and he builds it. He loves, the stu- shaitan loves for his to hear for him to go and show the people about it. Tell the people about it. Record, for example, in the presence of his library. And this is what shaitan can use for a talib ilm in his sincerity and his ikhlas. وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet ﷺ told us Allah loves الْعَبْدُ التَّقِيِّ الْخَفِي Allah loves the slave who is pious. His piety is he's also hidden. It doesn't, it's high, he's under low. As they, as they say low-key, right? He's low-key. No one knows of him. No one knows what he's up to. No, no one knows, knows what he does. But he's there. The more you hide the more Allah raises you ranks, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I remember when we visited uh, Sheikh Salim al-Tawil, and we were questioning him. We said to him, Sheikh, we're going to record you where he sat. And he said, no. He said, behind me, I book our books. People are going to think I read all of this. And, uh, you remember him saying that? So he moved from the position he was at, and he sat at a place where there was nothing behind him. That's powerful, the class, sincerity. So we have to realize, وَحَذَرْ مِنَ الْرِيَا Stay away from showing off. Stay away from showing off. That doesn't mean everybody who does it is showing off. And that's not what I'm saying. But one has to be very hidden, very private. Don't let shaitan destroy your righteous deeds of showing, uh, by showing off. Ya talib al-ilm, or student of knowledge. The way that shaitan comes to you is ayats that you've memorized, a hadith that you know, nusus that you know, just so you can what? Walidhalika, the author brought this for that reason. And something that the scholars used to start their books with. Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, Imam, Jabal, mounted. Reminded himself sincerity before he started his book. Khlas. He put the hadith, the famous hadith that we all read. Innama al-a'malu bidniyat. Imagine if you come the day of judgment and you have so much actions and righteous deeds that you've come with. And Allah hasn't accepted any one of them because you were showing off when you were doing it. It was mentioned that Al Muhammad al Amin al Shanqiri, rahimahullah, there was a book he wrote, a poetry he made when he was very young and he got rid of it and he destroyed it so they asked him why did he, his teacher said don't let it be don't destroy it first let the people benefit from it he said I didn't write it with good intention when I wrote it I didn't write it with good intentions I wrote it for what I wrote it to compete with my peers who's better me or you and that was my only purpose. I don't want it to be. Some of the ulama whose works today we look at and we study and we read and we ponder on and we analyze and we, crit- we scrutinize and today we are enjoying their, their hard work. Some of them we don't even know their names. Their names is not even known. You study Mandumatul Baykhuniya, do you know the name of the author? Do you know who's which? Some say Taha, some say Muhammad, some say this, some say that. Also, what do you call it? Al Imam Al Ajurum. Do you know the history? No one knows it. This is a Jurumiya that you study, that a Talib, if you go around any place in the world, thousands and thousands of people have memorized it. You know what it was for them? The issue was, as Imam Al Shafi'i rahimahullah says, I love the people to learn. 
I love the people to take the message in. Wala yunsaba ilayya shay, but nothing is attributed to me. Nothing is attributed to me. Attributed to me. Meaning the goal and the ultimate goal for them was that this message gets to the people. Whether it's me or whether it's somebody else. I don't want to be the one who's forefront all the time to be the one who deals with this issue necessarily as long as this message is being brought. The person who has sincerity, he gets happy when he sees a sahib sunnah, another person of the sunnah of his brother doing the same thing as him, he gets happy. The reason why he gets happy and he enjoys seeing him and he asks Allah privately, and he says, Allahumma ayyitu ya rabbal alameen. Oh Allah, give him ta'eed and support and help. Wallahi, he's going to go through a lot of hardship. It's because he what? He does not, it's not about him. He, for him, it's not. The, but the one who's showing off, it, for him, is him. And the only channel it has to come through is him. That's what sincerity brings about. And shaitan who is your enemy and every one of us, our enemy, the only people who he admitted to that he's not able to misguide are the sincere people. The only ones that won't be able to deviate and destroy are the sincere ones. And it is because of sincerity Yusuf was saved from the woman. Because Nabi Allah Yusuf was sincere. Allah, is, Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءَ إِنَّهُ, إنه مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ he was from our sincere slaves. So one has to truly understand that the strongest part of the human body, according to us, is what? This muscle right inside you, which is the heart, right? And within the heart, the greatest thing is sincerity. That is the best action of the heart. al ikhlas sincerity. And that is why they used to be excessively scared, the pious predecessors. They used to be very, very worried. Ali Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, Abu Ayyub, al-Sikhtiyari, rahimahullah, and others, they used to, Abu Ayyub al-Sikhtiyari, and others, they used to, they used to walk on little alleyways, not on the main road. And the reason why they would do that is because they did not like the people recognizing them and coming to them. It was said about Abdullah ibn Mubarak. He was one day at a well, a well, and he was trying to get water out. And as you know, people, everyone wants it, so they keep pushing each other. And so he got pushed and pulled and pushed because people don't know who he is. And he nearly fell into the well. And he smiled and he became happy and he said, Let this world be like this. And no one knows you. People deal with you like a normal person. There is no value or no importance that you're given. Let this world be like this for me. They used to be like that. A vuhur coming out and about and being seen. That's not what they wanted. So that's why they always used to hide from the people. And they used to keep themselves to themselves. So that's why the author says, وَكُنْ مُخْلِصًا لِلَّهِ وَحْذَرْ مِنَ الْرِيَا Stay away from showing off. Stay away from showing off. But he likes telling the self, they used to say, يَخْطُرُ فِي بَالِي Sometimes my mind, something might come to it. فَلَا أَقُولُهُ I don't say it. Why don't I say it? Because I can't find sincerity in my heart towards it. I don't find sincerity, so I just leave it. I don't feel like I'm sincere if I do do this. I think I'm probably going to do it for a worldly gain or something. So this is how they were. And they preferred that this was not given to them. But because of our ill-hearted today and how sick we are, we, w- we want only us to be the ones who are speaking and only the ones who are the reference points and only the ones who are seen. That is a cancer. It's a sincere cancer. So that's why every time a person needs to take a step back and needs to question himself, ask himself, what is his intention behind this? What is his motive? Why is he doing this for? So he doesn't become from the three people. Awwalu man tusa'ar. The three first people who are going to be dragged to the hellfire. 
and one of the people is a person who is what? It will be asked, knowledge was given to you, you were taught, you had knowledge, you had understanding of the religion, and you taught the people. What was your motive and your intention behind it? And he will say, oh Allah, I only did it for you and no one else but for you. It will be said to him, Kadabt. You lied and you're lying. You did it for worldly gain. You had another motive and intention behind it. And you gained what you wanted. You, want pop you wanted popularity. You wanted to get fame. You wanted recognition. You wanted to be relevant. You got what you asked for. You got what you want. You wanted a number of followers. Is that what you wanted? You got what you asked for. But there's nothing for you today. You have nothing, no... And then that person will be dragged to the hellfire. That person may have 50, 40, 70, 80 years. Might have been calling the people to the deen and educating the people. You see? And teaching them. But there was no sincerity. There was no ikhlas. So it's very important. If you want to be... Sometimes we... There's two things that we need for any action to be accepted. Sincerity and what? Mutaba'at al-Rasul. They are as important as each other. The Day of Judgment. The Salaf, they used to say two scrolls will be open for every action that you've done. Two questions will be placed on every action that you've done. Lima wa kayfa. Why did you do it? And how did you do it? Those are the two questions. Because those are going to be the two questions that every action of yours, the day of judgment, it will be asked. You need to ask yourself those two questions now. Why am I doing it? And how am I doing it? Once you realize that those two are correct, then go forward in doing it. If you have the how with you, but you don't have the why it doesn't give you the right to say those who don't have the why, oh, sorry, those who don't have the how, I'm going to correct them. So you have to have intention and according to the Sunnah of the Prophet, both of them. That's why that's why the author then brought the other part. He goes, And I sometimes realize that people attribute themselves to Dawati Ahl Sunnah, to Salafi, and whatnot. They might work towards follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. Naam. But when it comes to the issue of sincerity and ikhlas, you might find it present in the other people. The Mubtidia might have it more than some of them. And the Asaf Shadid. And it's one of the things we were talking about, which is Al-Ifrat and Al-Tafrid that happens. Are you there? Al-Ifrat and Al-Tafrid. You, you see a, a tabliqi or you see a mubtadi' who goes out, gives sadaqah, knocks on people's doors. Because it's Ramadan and he goes out and he gives and he knocks on people's doors. There was a man, I know him, old guy, old Pakistani uncle. Whenever Ramadan would enter, he always had money ready. He'd go to people's houses, knock on their door, but guess what he would do? Old uncle, he would cover his face. He'd give them money and walk away. And they would ask him, who are you? Don't need to know. Following the hadith of the Prophet, of course. He'd be very generous and give to the people. He would be. But his uncle had, you know, tasawwuf and whatnot in him. A person of the sunnah may critique him and, get, and toss over Everything this man has. Is that sahih? Is that correct? La. He might have tasawwuf and bid'ah and what not with him. That we, we just, we push that aside. We don't give. Bah. But this sincerity that he has, we need to have this. And this ikhlas, this is something that's missing from us. Something we need to ask Allah to give to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And work towards gaining that. Sah? Just because of his mistake that he has with him. We, we dismiss the good, the whole good that we need to have. We need to have that good in us. Are you with me? Not that I'm saying take the good, leave the bad. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is that if a person who is misguided comes with right 
just because the Mubtadi came with the right, that doesn't mean you toss that, you leave that right for him, that good for him. That's part of your religion, which you need to hold on to. <clears throat> Follow the Messenger, alayhi salatu salam. Every a'mal ta'abudiyya, every act of obedience that you come with after you've made sure sincerity is in place and you're doing it for Allah alone. You're not doing it for a worldly gain. You're doing it only for Allah. Then make sure that it is in accordance to the sunnah. Because if you're doing something sincerely and it is not in accordance to the sunnah, it's as bad as not doing it with sincerity. In other words, they are both null and void. And the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu salam, man amila amala laysa alayhi amruna, fahuwa radd. Anyone who does an action that is not from our affairs is rejected to him. It is rejected at you and it is غير مقبول and it is not accepted. So the author in this line of poetry, what did he combine between? He combined between the two conditions in which an action will be accepted. Sincerity in the religion and also following the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why Shaykh al Islam ibn al Qayyim al Jawziya in his book Al Wabil Sayyib. He said, لَيْسَ الشَّعْدُ فِي العمل. The matter is not the action. Some people just think, wow, he has come with actions. Ibn al-Qayyim says, the matter is not actions. It's not mere actions. إِنَّمَا الشَّعْنُ But the rather the matter really is. فِي حِفْضِ الْعَمَلِ Protecting your action. مِمَّا يُفْسِدُ In the things that can corrupt it. وَيُحَبِّطُهُ And can nullify it. فَالْرِيَا Showing off. وَإِنْ دَقَ Even if it's very little. مُحْبِطُ للعمل It will destroy your action. وَهُوْ أَبْوَابٌ كَثِيرَةٌ And it is many doors that it comes. لَا تُحْصَرْ No one can bring a figure to it. It's too much in number. Showing off how it happens. Second one is وَكَوْنُ الْعَمَلِ غَيَّرَ مُقَيَّدٍ بِتِبَعِ السُنَّةِ And that the action is not restricted and it is not in accordance to the sunnah of the messenger. عليه الصلاة والسلام أيضا also is موجب لكوني باطلا It also necessitates the nullifying of your actions. So the oh, Ibn al-Qayyim is saying it's not the fact that you've come with an action. But make sure that you work or make sure that you know what will nullify the actions. And there are two things. Not having sincerity and not following the messenger. Those are the two things that can nullify it. Imagine you pray and all of that nullify it. It's nothing, it's nothing beneficial about your action now. It's out of the window. So that statement of his is very powerful. We will conclude there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect, mistake, fault, slip of the tongue, is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه